Well, America's unfunded debt and entitlement provinces are reaching unprecedented levels. You've got 78 million baby boomers who are getting set to retire. David Walker is the president and CEO of the Peter G. Peterson Foundation. He is here with us exclusively this morning. Also, our guest host this morning is Congressman Paul Ryan. And, uh, David, we've spoken with you before about your concerns about what's happening here. But uh, why now? Why this push right now? Well, frankly, what I'm concerned is what's not happening. You know, we're in a $53 trillion hole, 41 trillion deals relates to Social Security and Medicare unfunded obligations. It's going up 2 to $3 trillion a year, even if we balance the budget tomorrow, and we're headed in the wrong direction in that regard. We've got too many people that support the do-nothing plan. And the do-nothing plan is bad for America, and it's bad for American families. And I must know, must note that Congressman Ryan's an exception to this. You may or may not like his plan, but at least he's got a plan. Congressman, tell us about your plan. Well, I introduced a very comprehensive plan. I call it a Roadmap for America's Future. You can go to www.americanroadmap.org. And it's a plan that specifically solves our entitlement crisis. How? It balances Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, makes them permanently solvent. It reforms the tax code and attacks our health care inflation crisis in health care. What I do is propose a plan to make sure that we keep the size of government basically what it is today. By the time my three kids, who are three, five, and six years old, are my age, they're going to have to pay twice the level of taxes we pay today just to keep the status quo afloat. But what about the entitlements themselves? You okay. can't freeze those at the level. No, no, what I do is I propose a lot of different changes. It takes me two, two shows to go through it. Yeah. Means testing our entitlement programs, optional personal retirement accounts for Social Security, converting Medicare into a defined contribution sort of voucher system with extra assistance for low income, means testing higher income, at risk adjusting payments for people who have deteriorating illnesses. What my plan does, as scored by the actuaries and trustees of Medicare and Social Security, is make those two programs permanently solvent, rewrite the way our health care system works so we have a portable benefit that we take with us from job to job, one that we own and control. And I also propose to fundamentally overhaul our tax code to make us more globally competitive in the 21st century. My plan basically does three things. It fulfills the mission of health and retirement security for all Americans, pays off this unfunded liability Dave Walker's talking about, and makes us competitive in the global economy in the 21st century. That's the goal of the whole plan. Sounds like a lot to chew. It is a lot to I chew mean, on. Is, is it, don't you want to prioritize something? It's hard enough for us to get a vote on immigration. That's right. So, but the problem is when you look at all these things, they're all so interrelated. Our tax code reflects our economic policy and how well we're going to you know, struggle or survive in, the, in this century's economy. These entitlement programs all relate with one another, and you can't fix our health care entitlements if you don't attack the problems in health care itself. And so when you look at this, it's integrated. My plan is designed to be done in stages and in increments, not one whole huge plan. But the point I'm trying to make is if we do nothing like Dave Walker's talking, we're going to go from 18.3% of GDP, which is the tax rate for the last 40 years, to 40% of GDP by the time my three kids are my age. It's yeah. unsustainable. David, the concern people start to have, though, when you start talking about entitlements is that people will get left behind. There will be people who will fall below what we have to this point set as a floor for how people should be treated if they are elderly, if they are sick. How do you... How do you handle this problem, but still look to making sure that you're taking care of the most unfortunate people in America? Well, Becky, let's make it very clear. We need to have a solvent, sustain, a sustainable and secure safety net for Americans. We need to focus those who are truly in need. Uh, and my personal view is, is that Social Security should be a base defined benefit program for a variety of reasons with a supplemental individual account. With regard to Medicare, we have middle and upper income welfare through the Medicare system. For Part B, which is supplemental medical insurance, physicians and outpatient, and Part D, which is prescription drugs, on average, the taxpayers pay 75% of the cost of that program. And the taxpayers in this case are our kids and our grandkids mm -hmm. because we're debt financing our, you know, the, uh, the, the shortfall in, in uh, our deficits right now. Is it fair, though, to say that medical costs have spiraled out of control? If you take that away from someone you would label as middle class, if you take some of that assistance away, would they be able to afford the same sort of health care coverage, the same sort of uh, drug benefits? Well, I think we need to do two things on health care. One, we've got to take a number of steps, and you can dedicate a program to this, to slow the rate of increase in health care. And secondly, we have to engage in comprehensive health care reform and installments to achieve four objectives. Number one, universal coverage for basic and essential that's affordable and sustainable over time. Number two, a budget for what the federal government will spend on health care. Number three, national evidence-based practice standards for the practice of medicine. And number four, increased personal responsibility for, for a, a person's own health and wellness. 
Those four are the pillars of the way forward. That is exactly what I have in my plan. I, those are the four basic principles I employ to rewriting health care. The big driver of this problem is health care costs and population, obviously. The baby boomers are retiring. Mm -hmm. What I also propose is a, is a fundamental strengthening of the safety net. So we have a safety net for low-income people, but do it in a solvent way that's sustainable so that we can make sure that we can keep this country you know, great. We heard where uh, the website where the congressman's uh, plan is put forward, and David, we should point out that yours is at uh, pgpf.org, Peter G. Peterson Foundation.org. It is. Thank you. Okay. David, thank you very much for joining us this morning again. It's David Walker. and uh, Always a pleasure. Guest. Great to talk to you.